Should you invest in ExxonMobil? Let's analyze it on growth shares. This analysis focuses on three factors, the business, the stock, and the price. There are 11 metrics that make up those three factors. The three factors and 11 metrics are graded on a scale from 0 to 99, with a range from 50 to 59 considered average. When we combine the three factors, we come up with our company's final grade. As such, most companies I'll analyze in this channel will fall in that average range since most companies are indeed average long-term investments. I've made an explainer video going to detail on the three factors and 11 metrics I use to analyze companies. Link to that video in the description. Each company belongs to a specific sector of the economy. My analysis normalizes the data so that we can compare companies between sectors. I encourage you to pause this video anytime. Let's first look at the company's business. The business factor accounts for 45% of the analysis. The business is the most important part of this analysis. Everything else should be secondary when it comes to investing long term. The question we want answered is, do we think this is a good business to own? The business is made up of these six metrics, from growth, efficiency, to market dominance. Each are weighted based on importance to the business factor. Let's first look into growth. How much is the company growing? Next, let's look at margins. How much output is generated for every dollar kept? Third, operations. Is the company wasting money in the conduct of its business? Fourth, debt utilization. How much debt is being used to fuel the company's growth? Fifth, efficiency. Is the company using revenue to grow, expand, and innovate its business? And sixth, market dominance. Is the company close to being a monopoly? To recap, here are the six metric grades for the company. And when we put them together, we get the company's business grade. Next is the company's stock. The stock factor accounts for 35% of the analysis. The stock is important because we want to know if investors see value in the same business. We still want a return on our investment. The question we want answered is, will the stock grow enough in the future to justify an investment? The stock is made up of these four metrics, from performance to dividends. Each are weighted based on importance to the stock factor. Let's first look at the stock performance. Is the company's stock performing as well as the overall market? Next, let's look at dividends. Does the company pay out a dividend and how much? Third, technicals. What are short-term traders looking at in the company? And fourth, Wall Street. What do other analysts say about the company? To recap here, the four metric grades for the company. And when we put them together, we get the company's stock grade. Then is the company's price. The price factor accounts for 20% of the analysis. The price is important because it tells us whether the company's stock price is attractive enough for us to buy in. The question we want answered is, what is the most you should pay for the company? The price is made up of only one metric, the intrinsic value, or fair value price of the company. Here's the company's price grade and the fair value price compared to its current price. Before we calculate our final grade, consider becoming a GrowthShares Patreon member and get access to my spreadsheet with every grade from every company I've analyzed. It's updated all the time. Head to patreon.com forward slash GrowthShares or click on the link in the description. By combining the business, the stock, and the price, we can get our overall outlook of the company, which gives us this final grade and its type of investment. Should you invest in Equinar? Let's analyze it on GrowthShares. Like every company in this channel, this analysis is for long-term investors. This analysis focuses on three factors, each weighted differently, the business, the stock, and the price. Within each factor are a total of 11 metrics from business growth, performance, to intrinsic value. And of course, the company's sector is accounted for so you can compare seamlessly. The factors and metrics are given a grade from 0 to 99. When our three factors are added up, we get our final grade. I encourage you to pause this video anytime so you can better understand the numbers. I'm going to throw a lot of numbers at you, so I've made a separate video explaining everything. Link in the description below for that video. Let's first look at the business, which accounts for 45% of the analysis. What we ask is, do we think this is a good business to own? We use the six metrics along with their grades to answer that question. And together we get our business grade. Next, let's look at the stock, which accounts for 35%. What we ask is, will the stock grow enough in the future to justify an investment? 
we use these four metrics along with their grades to answer that question. And together we get our stock grade. Third, we look at the company's price, which accounts for 20%. What we ask is, what is the most you should pay for the company? We get our intrinsic value along with the grade to answer that question. And before we calculate our final grade, consider becoming a GrowthShare's patron and get access to my spreadsheet with every grade from every company I've analyzed. It's updated all the time. Head to patreon.com forward slash GrowthShares or click on the link in the description. Putting the business, the stock, and the price together, we get the company's final grade. Should you invest in BP? Let's analyze it on growth shares. This analysis is divided into three factors, the business, the stock, and the price. There are a total of 11 metrics that make up the three factors. If you aren't familiar with the grading I use in this channel, I've made a separate video detailing everything. Pause this video anytime. The business factor answers the question, do we think this is a good business to own? Here are the six metric grades that make up the business. Here's the business grade. The stock factor answers the question, will the stock grow enough in the future to justify an investment? Here are the four metric grades that make up the stock. Here's the stock grade. The price factor answers the question, what is the most you should pay for the company? Here's the price grade and intrinsic value of the company. Finally, let's put everything together and get our final grade. Should you invest in Chevron? Let's analyze it on growth shares. This analysis is divided into three factors, the business, the stock, and the price. Within each factor are a total of 11 metrics from business growth, performance, to intrinsic value. Each of the three factors and 11 metrics are given a grade from 0 to 99, with 50 to 59 being considered average. When we've got the three factors graded, we combine them to get our final grade. Each company belongs to a specific sector of the economy. My analysis normalizes the data so that you can compare companies between sectors. Most companies will fall into that average range, since most companies are indeed average long-term investments. I encourage you to pause this video anytime so you can better understand the numbers. First, let's look at the business. The business factor accounts for 45% of the analysis. The business asks the question, is the company a good business to own? There are six metrics that make up the business factor, from growth and efficiency to market dominance. Each are weighted based on importance to the business. First, growth. Growth looks at all the company's growth data and optimizes it into a single percentage, giving us the long-term growth rate of the company. The models tell us that a growth rate of 15% is considered average. Here's our growth grade. Next, margins. Margins looks at all the company's dollar output data and optimizes it into a single percentage, giving us the company's output generated for every dollar it keeps for further investments and so forth. The models tell us that a margin rate of 10% is considered average. Here's our margins grade. Third, operations. Operations looks at all the company's ratio data against its market price and optimizes it into a single ratio, telling us how effectively the company is running its business. Simply, is the company wasting money as it conducts business? The models tell us that an operations ratio of 12.5 is considered average. Here's our operations grade. Fourth, debt utilization. Debt utilization looks at all the debt that company has on its books and determines whether enough money is coming in to repay those liabilities. How much debt is being used to fuel the company's growth? It's optimized into a single ratio. The models tell us that a debt ratio of 0.75 is considered average. Here's our debt utilization grade. Fifth, efficiency. Efficiency looks at all the money generated from the company to see if it's using that money to grow, expand, and innovate further. It's optimized into a percentage. The models tell us that an efficiency rate of 10% is considered average. Here's our efficiency grade. 
Lastly, in the business factor is market dominance. Market dominance looks at various competitive data points such as market share of primary product or services, market cap, strength of competitors, and size of customer base. It's optimized into a tier ranking. The models tells us that a market dominance tier 5 is considered average. Here's our market dominance grade. To recap, here's the six metric grades. And when we put them together, we get our business grade. Let's then look at the stock. The stock factor accounts for 35% of the analysis. The stock asks the question, will the company's stock perform well enough in the future to justify an investment? There are four metrics that make up the stock factor, from performance to Wall Street. Each are weighted based on importance to the price. First, stock performance. Stock performance looks at how well the company's stock has done over a 1, 3, 5, and 10 year period, and then compares it with the same timeframes as its sector and that of the S&P 500. It's optimized into a single percentage to see how well the company's stock has grown. The models tells us that a performance rate of 0% is considered average. Here's our performance grade. Next are dividends. Dividends looks at how much the company is paying out to shareholders as a percentage yield, signifying a considerable and consistent income source for long-term investors. The models tells us that a dividend yield of 1.75% is considered average. Here's our dividend grade. Third, technicals. Technicals looks at all the chart data, focusing on the 50 and 200 day moving averages, along with the stock's RSI, to give us an idea of what shorter term investors see or hope for. It's optimized as a percentage. The models tells us that a technical rate of 5% is considered average. Here's our technicals grade. Lastly, in the stock factor is Wall Street. Wall Street looks at the conclusive grades other analysts have given the company. The data is optimized as a ratio that tells us the sentiment of what Wall Street thinks of the company. The models tells us that a Wall Street ratio of 3 is considered average. Here's our Wall Street grade. To recap, here's the four metric grades. And when we put them together, we get our stock grade. Let's then look at the price. The price factor accounts for 20% of the analysis. The price asks the question, what is the most you should pay for the company? The price factor consists of only one metric, the intrinsic value. The intrinsic value figures out the fair value price of the company using a discounted cash flow model with a leaning towards the conservative side to provide a robust margin of safety. We can answer the question, what is the most you should pay for the company? A stock price higher than the fair value price is considered overvalued. A stock lower than that is considered undervalued. The models tells us that an intrinsic value of 0% is considered fairly valued. Here's our intrinsic value and price grade. Before we calculate our final grade, consider becoming a GrowthShares Patreon member and get access to my spreadsheet with every grade from every company I've analyzed. It's updated all the time. Head to patreon.com forward slash GrowthShares or click on the link in the description. By combining the business, the stock, and the price, we can get the overall outlook of the company which gives us this final grade and its type of investment. Should you invest in Shell? Let's analyze it on growth shares. I encourage you to pause this video at any time. I divided this analysis into three factors, the business, the stock, and the price. The business is 45% of the analysis, the most important aspect for any long-term investor. The stock is 35%, we still want the company's stock to rise significantly. And the price is 20%, which I calculate using a discounted cash flow model to get the company's fair value price. The three factors are made up of a total of 11 metrics. If anything is confusing, I've made a separate video describing each factor and metric in detail. Each factor and metric is graded on a 0 to 99 scale, with 99 at the high end and 0 at the low end. So first, let's look at the company's business. Basically, we want to answer the question, is this a good business to own? We answer that with these six metrics. And come out with our business grade. Next, we look at the company's stock. Basically, we want to answer the question, will the stock grow enough in the future to justify an investment? 
We answer that with these four metrics. And come out with our stock grade. We then look at the company's price. Basically, we want to answer the question, what is the most you should pay for the company? We answer that with the price grade and intrinsic value of the stock. Now, before we calculate our final grade, consider becoming GrowthShare's Patreon member. You'll receive grades from every company I've analyzed. Click on the link in the description or go to patreon.com forward slash growthshares. By combining the business, the stock, and the price, we can get the overall outlook of the company, which gives us this final grade and the type of investment it is. Should you invest in total energies? Let's analyze it on growth shares. Before we begin, if you aren't familiar with the factors and metrics I use in this channel, I've made a separate video detailing everything to get you caught up. This analysis is divided into three factors, the business, the stock, and the price. When we've got the three factors graded, we combine them to get our final grade. Each of the three factors are given a grade from 0 to 99, with 50 to 59 being considered average. Pause this video if you need to better understand the numbers. Let's first look at the business. The business factor answers the question, do we think this is a good business to own? Here's the six metric grades that make up the business. And when we put them together, we get the company's business grade. Let's then look at the stock. The stock factor answers the question, will the stock grow enough in the future to justify an investment? Here's the four metric grades that make up the stock. And when we put them together, we get the company's stock grade. Let's then look at the price. The price factor answers the question, what is the most you should pay for the company? Here is the price grade and intrinsic value of the company. Do you want every grade from every company I've analyzed? Become a Patreon member and receive access to my spreadsheet, patreon.com forward slash growth shares. Let's put our three factors together and get our company's final grade. Should you invest in ConocoPhillips? Let's analyze it on growth shares. Before we begin, if you aren't familiar with the factors and metrics I use in this channel, I've made a separate video detailing everything to get you caught up. This analysis is divided into three factors, the business, the stock, and the price. Within each factor are a total of 11 metrics from business growth, performance, to intrinsic value. And because each company belongs to a specific sector of the economy, my analysis normalizes the data so that you can compare companies between sectors. Each of the three factors and 11 metrics are given a grade from 0 to 99, with 50 to 59 being considered average. When we've got the three factors graded, we combine them to get our final grade. Most companies will fall into that average range, since most companies are indeed average long-term investments. I encourage you to pause this video anytime so you can better understand the numbers. Let's first look at the business. The business factor accounts for 45% of the analysis. The business examines what makes a company a good business to own. The business factor is made up of these six metrics, each weighted based on importance. And here are the corresponding grades. And when we put them together, we get the company's business grade. Let's next look at the stock. The stock factor accounts for 35% of the analysis. The stock examines how much we can expect the stock to grow over time. The stock factor is made up of these four metrics, each weighted based on importance. And here are their corresponding grades. And when we put them together, we get the company's stock grade. Let's then look at the price. The price factor accounts for 20% of the analysis. The price examines the intrinsic value or fair value price of the company. The price factor is made up of only one metric, the intrinsic value. Here's the company's intrinsic value and price grade. Before we calculate our final grade, consider becoming a GrowthShare's Patreon member and get access to my spreadsheet with every grade from every company I've analyzed. It's updated all the time. Head to patreon.com forward slash growthshares or click on the link in the description. Let's put our three factors together and get our company's final grade. Here's the grade along with the type of investment it is. This analysis uses public financial data, research, and a proprietary algorithm to come up with this company's grades. But what are your thoughts? Do you agree? 
Want to talk business? Email me and follow the instructions on the screen. Invest wisely, and as always, take care of your money.